Alrighty guys, what is up? Welcome back to another tutorial with Lone Debater 7 about Grim Dawn. And today we are going to go ahead and show you guys how to set up controller controls. Or like, so it's not obvious, so like if you have a controller for your computer and you want to play Grim Dawn using that controller, you can do it. But it is not obvious about how to like get it going initially, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. So. Obviously, I'm, this is with mouse and keyboard control right now, so the first thing you're going to do is push the escape key on your keyboard, hit options menu, go to key binding, and then you want to make sure enable non-Steam gamepad is set up, and if your controller is wireless, which mine is wireless, I'll include a link down in the video below where you can get the same controller as me uh, off of Amazon. It's pretty good, I would say. It works with everything, so like PC, Switch, Xbox, PS4, PS5. So like, it's a good controller and it's not that expensive, um, which is why I got it. Uh, anyway, no worries. So once you click this, if you hit default, it will get all of the key bindings for your specific controller and pull them in automatically and populate them to do what they're supposed to over here. Okay, so that's great. Um, my key bindings are kind of already set up. Dang it. There we go. Okay, so once it's done, if you move the joystick on your controller, it will put you in controller mode. You can you also use the arrow keys. It'll put you back in to hit return game, or you can just hit the B button in my case, since it's an Xbox controller uh, to come back out but now I am moving with the controller and you can tell it's with the controller because there's no mouse button like in my GUI settings or my UI settings whichever one I forget how Grim Dawn organizes it my mouse or cursor shows up as the little hand icon uh, I still get it when I'm in menus with the controller which is uh, point one that we're going to talk about in a second but it goes away when I'm using the controller because I don't have a cursor on the screen. You can also tell because now my abilities down in the bottom of the screen in the center are mapped to controller keys as opposed to uh, keys on my keyboard. So, all right, that's fine and dandy. You can, you know, do your abilities, do a bunch of fancy stuff. Woo. We can swing our axe around like a champ. Cool. That's awesome, right? So we can move around, but... I did tweak the settings a little bit from their default, and I just want to cover how to do that real quick. Uh, so the key on mine uh, is the left option button, the circle one, not the square one. Obvi the square one repairs it, the circle one um, opens is the option button. So it's the circle button on my controller. Uh, it's the minus, it has the minus sign on it. Uh, so that's the one I push to open this. Then you can see at the top, if you hit left and right, you'll be able to move back and forth. And that is by default. Uh, it's fairly good. You can get into the loop filter, change what you're looking for and all that jazz, which is fine. Um, not a bad way to, to get in there. The other way you can get in, if you push the down directional arrow on your keypad, it'll put you into the map menu of this uh, right away. And then if you push uh, the up directional key it'll open the portal so those are fine um but let's talk about how you actually bind your skills so let's say you want to assign skills the easiest way to do this is to do it out of this menu if you see at the bottom underneath this menu uh if i hit a it's to select b is back and then there will be a button bound to assign the skills you want to push this whatever that button is and it'll open up this radial menu and then you can bind all of these and if you have extra macro keys, you can actually bind additional um, uh, abilities out on these extra slots. I generally use these uh, over here for like my passives. So like I have two passive skills at the moment on this character. So they're down here on the directional arrows because I don't really use those otherwise. Uh, health potions are default bound to left and right bumper on this controller. I did change default attack was bound on A and then they kind of like wanted you to progress uh, to like, I don't know, the rest were all were fine, but they had your default on A, which I guess would be fine. I find it more intuitive to push the right trigger button, however, so I rebound the default attack to right trigger 
and then I put my dash ability on A, and I'm, I did that primarily because I'm used to using the controller to play in Hades, and I found that was a good layout. Then X is like a special attack, Y is my other fast attack, so A, and A is my charge in, Y is my fast attack, Y in the right trigger, and then B is like a wave and my stun. Uh, so when I get overwhelmed, I push B and it pushes everyone away from me. X is a special attack. Cool. So that's kind of how it works. Now, you may be saying, all right, this is kind of limited. If you push the right button in and it will say down at the bottom, swap configuration, whatever that key is for you, push that and you get a second set of menu that you can go ahead and set up. And that basically is like the second action bar. So that's pretty good. Uh, not the worst in the world in my like it it it's playable granted i like this is the first character i've ever played with a controller before um so i don't know how viable this is going to be once i get to the end game uh not like i'm at the warden and i think i'll be fine for that but i mean like the end of the standard acts you know before you go into the dlc type stuff um but anyway guys video is pretty much wrapped up we do have we've pretty much covered everything i did just want to talk about a couple of things real quick about using the controller as more or less tips tip one i would say once you get it connected i would definitely take the time to go in to the menu get a feel for how the controller works uh you can move the squares with the directional arrows you can move with the uh, analog stick and then i find that and, and you can actually select these or no, you do need to use the bumpers to move across these various menus. Um, but figure out what's going to work for you as far as your key bindings go. I would do that through the skills menu and go to the assigned skills straight out just so you can get your ability set up. That way, if you happen to get attacked by something, uh, you at least, you know, are going to be able to do it. There is a transition period, as always, whenever you uh, switch what type of controlling interface you're going to use to play the game. Uh, but I found that it was relatively simple to do to get it set up. Now that it's set up for me, um, I can pretty much use the controller with the same effect as the keyboard. Uh, that brings in tip number two. The, in my opinion, I think the controller sucks for inventory management. Like moving all these things, it takes forever if you're going to do it with the directional pads. And then the analog stick is hard to control in there. Um, it's way easier. You just move your mouse, swip it, switch into mouse and key, take care of your inventory stuff. Equipping stuff is fine, but like these smaller ones sometimes are easier to move this way. Anyway, uh, hop in here, sort your inventory how you want like that with the mouse. And then when you're ready to resume controller play, just move the directional pad and boom, we're back over in controller play. And we just use the mouse to make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, so that'd be tip number two when playing with a controller that I'd suggest to you. Um, tip three, I find that pushing the A button is the most, it's like the easiest one for people to press, right? So there's some schools of thought that would say, well, that's where you should put your main attack because if you're attacking, you're good. My school of thought would be that's where you put your escape uh, because then the easiest button for you to press will get you to safety right so you're not going to die as often if you do that i feel like um maybe that's just the way i play the game but that's that's my extra tip for you guys on using a controller with grim dawn i hope this video has helped if so be sure to subscribe and let me know down in the comments below i do plan on making a playthrough series um of grim dawn i want to play through again uh we'll probably do a veteran playthrough so I, this is more or less has been a test character to kind of get a feel for a couple of different ascendancy classes or skill classes than what I've played before. Uh, so anyway, guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to watch those episodes live or if you just want to get notified when the next episode in the series come, comes out. I do plan on making more Grim Dawn tutorials in the future, uh, so be sure to let me know what you want to see. I'll do my best to accommodate. But this has been Lone Debater 7. And until next time, we will see ya!